kind of fell into this because there was a, a workshop that we did um, with in an interesting collaboration between a marine biologist and uh, a couple of us artists. So uh, we started going to these barrier islands in Louisiana, and I was immediately really stricken by this landscape um, for a few reasons. There is a, a specifically this is a um, kind of area. If, um, just to, just to kind of give you an idea, this is southwest of New Orleans, about an hour and a half, a couple of hours, and uh, this is an area that's uh, the main watershed of Mississippi at that point in Louisiana. So these are the, the main wetlands in Louisiana, and it turns out that uh, because of several reasons, geological and, and um, historical reasons, and Influences. This area is really kind of weird in that way that it presents um, one of the largest wetlands in, in the United States, and it also represent, represents a um, an area that's disappearing at the uh, almost like the fastest rate, and the rate is uh, uh, at about a football field size wetlands is disappearing every half an hour. So immediately to me it, it started being this, this landscape that's, that's um, A, worth recording and B, it became this sort of like a reversed kind of, kind of track in time where I was noticing every few months if I was, if I was showing up there um, you know, every several months and photographing the same area, it would be completely different. Due to storms, due to um, channeling of Mississippi River, um, fluid erosion of these islands. You mean engineer channeling? Yes, yes. Um, since the um, 1930s, Mississippi has been channeled in one specific uh, direction. Um, so, uh, as a photographer who kind of dabbles in, in I like scientific readings and everything, so I, I really immediately started looking through this, through the history of the area, and it was a collaboration with, uh, with uh, a marine biologist. Uh, so we really kind of started taking students out there, and we also um, started photographing there as, as artists. So um, these images um, really represent kind of a, a time stretch between 2006 and 2009. Most, well, I would, I would say about a third of these images are from 2006, and then um, two thirds are from, from last year. And you'll notice some of very similar uh, areas and locations uh, that are changing very frequently through this. Um, so typically, um, I let me talk about the process a little bit. This is kind of a typical camera that I'm using. This is a brand new one. This is a pinhole camera that I just constructed and, and kind of made. Um, and the reason I started using that camera is in 2006, after Hurricane Katrina, um, I wanted to photograph these images in a very primitive way to sort of show the emotion of, of Kind of loss of area after these images, uh, after these areas have been affected by the storms. And I also wanted to use uh, Polaroid film. So the images were really made in the, in the specific locations. And in a way, they, they sort of show the grit of the area because a lot of them you can see at the, um, at the edges, uh, they have sort of like dust marks and, and they're specifically developed and fixed as an image right at the island locations. Um, this is a, a lot more kind of advanced um, camera that I'm, that I'm using right now, but uh, a lot of these were taken just with a cardboard box with a, with a pinhole in it. So um, essentially, um, I, really, I really enjoyed kind of using this disappearing process to photograph 
uh, a disappearing physical area in a way. And it feels, uh, uh, just to give you my background, I'm originally from Serbia, uh, which used to be a part of uh, Yugoslavia, if anybody remembers. And uh, um, I, I feel the reason that I'm, that I'm really attracted to these landscapes that are changing rapidly and disappearing is because they sort of represent a metaphor for my own history and my own background. And uh, so that's, that's, re uh, that's basically this uh, 